Hey folks, guess what time of year it is? Deer season's over so I can put my antlers on and be safe. We're coming up on Christmas. And you know what that means. Mar Kelly Farm Christmas candy. And we're going to make it this year and give it to all our friends and family. So if you want to come along, we'll get her done. We're going to add a couple more new ones for you this year. So stick with us. We're going to get with it. Thought I'd change back to a hat you're more used to. So I got my comfy pants on. We're playing Christmas music. Kelly's been decorating the house. We'll show you all her cool decorations towards the end of the video. So stick around. She'll also be posting her pictures on Mark Kelly Farm YouTube page. So if you want to see what Kelly's up to, go over to the YouTube. Uh, let's get this candy started. Our first recipe that we're going to do is new this year, but it's really good. So let's get hopping. First things first, get you a food processor or Ninja Blender like we got. Put 38 Oreo cookies in your canister, which doesn't use the whole bag. So I don't know what we're going to do with these extra Oreo cookies here. Um, we're going to have to figure that out, I guess. But put them in here. We're going to take them for a spin. You want to go till you got fine cookie crumbs just like that so now we're going to get out the stand mixer so in our stand mixer bowl we got eight ounces of softened cream cheese and we're going to beat that till it's uh, whipped up fairly good got our cream cheese whipped up so now we're going to add our oreo crumbs Oops. gotta get a little more out of there all right, so we're going to blend that until it's well combined. Okay, it's well combined. That's what it looks like when it's done. Get your little spatula out. Clean off your uh, flat beater. And then uh, we're going to go to the next operation, which we're going to make little balls out of this. So to make our balls, you guessed it, one of my favorite tools in the kitchen, we're using a number 40 disher. And then we'll just go right in here in our mixture. Make sure we got exactly one scoop. And then we'll put it right out on our cookie sheet like that. We're going to keep going until we got them all made. Now you can use whatever flavor Oreos you want. They make all kinds of different flavors. I think they got the vanilla and peanut butter and all that. So use whatever flavor you want. It's not going to hurt anything. And then the rest of the procedure is pretty much going to be the same. After you got them all scooped out, take each one roll it around in the palm of your hand like this so it makes a nice smooth ball and then put it back on your cookie sheet and then once we get them all rolled up like this we're going to put them in the freezer for 15 minutes so while our balls are in the freezer we've got two bags of our hershey's premier white chips People like to call it white chocolate, but it's not actually chocolate. Now, you could use chocolate, any type of chocolate chip you'd like, dark, light, butterscotch, or whatever, but we're going with the white. Now, there's about two cups in each bag, so we got four cups of chips, and to that, we're going to add five tablespoons of coconut oil. Now, if you don't have coconut oil, you can use shortening. And then we've got this in a double boiler. What that coconut oil is going to do is going to loosen up that chocolate a little bit and make it easier for dipping in. And uh, it'll work just fine. Again, any kind of chips you want. So 
Let's get some uh, fire underneath this pot and get this melting. Also a good tip on the double boilers, make sure your bowl is not touching the water underneath. You want the heat from the steam, but you don't want to get it super hot because your chocolate will break. And that's the whole reason we're doing it as a double boiler anyway. Now some people will just do this in the microwave. They'll put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds, stir it 30 seconds, and so on and so on until it gets the right consistency. But the reason I'm using a double boiler is because I can take this uh, whole system over to where I'm dipping and that hot water will help keep everything in the bowl uh, warm. Whereas if I was just to take the bowl, it would cool off a lot quicker. We had our mixture on medium low. And then once it started melting good, we're down to low. So you can see we're the right consistency now. So we're going to turn the fire off and we're going to get to dipping. All right, time to start dipping. Have our pot on a hot pad here. Now I manufactured this fork a long time ago. I cut the two center tines out so I could put a, a ball of something on there and it'll drip out pretty good. So I'll show you how that works. I just put one on there, drop it in there real quick, and then out it comes. Just like that. Let it drip. And then you just put it on your sheet. You kind of get a little flat piece on the bottom where it's sitting on the cookie sheet, but that doesn't hurt anything. And we'll keep dipping until we're done. Now once you're all done, I take my little fork and I drip some chocolate with it over the top of them. That'll kind of give like a cool frosting on the top. You could also put some food coloring in your mix and make it a different color. That would be cool. But we're just going to drizzle it around on the top. You can also put some sprinkles on them if you want. All right, our Oreo balls are done. I did another batch while you weren't looking. I ran out of this type of sprinkles, so I just used the red. So on to the next recipe. Okay, our next recipe is one of the easiest ones you could do, but people really love them. So we're going to make some peanut clusters. So we're going to use our milk chocolate chips here. And we're going to use a can of cocktail peanuts. They're salted. And we're going to dump our chocolate into our bowl and we're going to microwave it about 30 seconds at a time until it's ready to go. After your chocolate starts heating up, we added one and a half tablespoons of coconut oil to help smooth out the mix a little bit. We'll stir that in and keep heating until we're at the right consistency. Now that our chocolate is melted, we're going to add our peanuts and stir those in until they're all well coated. Now that they're well coated with chocolate, just take it by spoonfuls and it's kind of a two-hand operation so you get about what you want in your cluster and just drop it on your cookie sheet make sure it stays together and that's all there is to it got all those done now remember that all this was was a uh, let's see 16 ounce can one pound of peanuts one bag of milk chocolate. You can use any chocolate you like though. You can use dark chocolate or whatever. And one and a half tablespoons of coconut oil. That's all it takes. Now, what do you say we dress these up a little bit? I have some of our white dipping chocolate left from yesterday. Let's make these things pretty. Oh, I think that dressed them up right nice. They look a little less like uh, droppings and a little more like candy. Now the next recipe is one that I just have to make. There's no getting around it. 
It's everybody's, well, one of everybody's favorites, so there's no getting around it. So let's get it going. Okay, this next recipe is our Rocky Road bars. The lady I got the recipe from called them O. Henry bars, but I don't know the reasoning behind that. Um, I've never had an O. Henry candy bar, so I don't know if there's a comparison. But super simple, three bags of chips. You've got the butterscotch chips, peanut butter chips, and semi-sweet chocolate chips. We're going to pour them all in the bowl, and then we're going to mix them up real quick. All right, we're going to give them a mix so they're combined once they melt. You want to make sure you're in a microwave-safe bowl. Now this, this goes in the microwave for exactly three minutes on high. All right, three minutes has elapsed, so all your chips should be melted. You're going to stir them together to combine to where it's all a light brown color. You won't see any streaks in it when you're done. Just like that. Now you're going to wait exactly five minutes. Now while you're waiting, measure out two cups of Rice Krispies. You can use the cheap kind, it doesn't matter. And then one small bag of mini marshmallows, that's like a 10 ounce bag. So those are ready to go. Alright, we are ready to go. We've waited five minutes, so we're going to dump all of our Rice Krispies. And the reason we wait is so we don't melt our marshmallows. And then the whole bag of marshmallows. And then you're going to stir this until all of the white of the marshmallows disappears. You'll see that uh, you'll no longer be able to see the white. And that's when you're done stirring. As you're stirring, just fold it, scrape from the side, go all the way to the bottom and bring it up. It's going to want to start setting up on you fairly quickly. So. We want to get it in the pan. We're almost there. And then it's good to use a spatula. I'm using, I think it's called a spoonula. It's like a cross between a spoon and a spatula. So now we're going to dump this out on our cookie sheet lined with parchment. I'm going to put it right in the middle. Try to elongate the pile a little bit because that's the shape we're going to get. Scrape all this out of the bowl. Now we want to put this in a rough rectangle. So let's do kind of a rough one here. You got to hold the parchment down in the pan while you move it. All right, that's good enough. We'll get another piece of parchment put on top. And then we're going to grab another aluminum pan. Put it on top like this. And we're going to just give it a little smash, flatten it out a little bit. Just like that. And that's all she wrote. Now once this is cool, you can peel this parchment right off the top, cut it into little squares, and you're done. We'll show you. I've got to give a shout out to our friends Dave and Stephanie we just visited down in Tennessee. They picked up this bowl set for us uh, somewhere down there and gave it to us while we were in Tennessee. It's got every size mixing bowl clear down to this little tiny thing. That is super cool. We've been using the heck out of these things and they replaced like two other sets of bowls we had. Alright, what's that? Three recipes down now? So 
Let's do our fourth, another super easy recipe. We're going to do our turtles, which is another uh, favorite of everybody we give this stuff to. So let's get those started. First thing you want to do is get you a bag of mini pretzels and put them out on a cookie sheet one layer deep. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to unroll our Rolos. If you can get the rolls of Rolos, they're already unwrapped. But if you get these bags, you've got to unwrap every single one. And then they didn't have enough of the regular Rolos, so we're using the salted caramel dark Rolos. But those will be fine. I think we used those last year. When you're almost done unrolling all your Rolos and placing your Rolos, go preheat your oven to 250 degrees so it's got a chance to heat up. Got all of our Rolos unwrapped. For this whole cookie sheet, it took two of these large bags and two of these small bags. And I had six left over. Again, we're going to have to figure out what to do with those. So these are going to go in a 250 degree oven for five minutes. While we're waiting for the oven, I've dumped my pecans out on a plate. It's a little easier to grab them. You can go a little bit faster once those come out of the oven. All right, our turtles are out of the oven, so you're going to grab a pecan, put a pecan on top of your Rolo, and then press it down like that. And we're going to keep doing that for all of them. You can see I got some milk chocolate Rolos here too. That's what I normally use. We'll come back when these are all done. That's another recipe done. They even look like little turtles, don't they? So let's get on the next recipe. We got to do a little work ahead of time. I've got uh, about one layer of almonds on this cookie sheet. So we still have our oven on from melting our turtles. We're going to throw these in here for about 15 minutes. I turned it up to 350 degrees. We're going to toast those. All right, this next recipe goes way back. And if I don't make anything else for Christmas, I will make this recipe. It's an English toffee recipe using uh, almonds. Um, I got this recipe from my dad's uh, boss's mother way back in the day. Uh, she used to give us a box of it every Christmas. And dad would hide it in his closet because he didn't want us kids to gobble it all up. It's that good. So let's get after this recipe now. Our toasted almonds that we did, we're going to separate them out now to where we got the large almonds and then the uh, really fine almonds. And to separate those, I just use my little spider here. Now for every recipe, you're going to need a half a cup of your coarse chopped almonds. Mixed with a half a cup of our fine almonds. And that's going to go inside your toffee and then it's going to take another half a cup of the fine almonds on top when we're done. All right, it's time to get the party started. Now, this recipe calls for margarine. And the reason why uh, the lady used margarine, she said, because it doesn't separate. And she said, do not substitute the margarine with butter. However, our first candy video, uh, we used the margarine. Everybody gave me a bunch of grief for using margarine. Said, you can use butter, it works just fine. So we're going to use butter this year. And if it doesn't work, it's your fault. You know who you are. So we have four sticks of butter. That's another thing you know, that uh, I did that caused a problem in that first video. I called them cubes of butter. Because uh, when we were growing up, we called them cubes. If you called them cubes when you were growing up, or if you still call them cubes, let me know in the comments. So I know I'm not the Lone Ranger on that. So this equals two cups, half cup sticks. And then to that, we're going to add two cups of sugar. All right, we're going to turn the fire on this and we're going to put it on medium high for now. So the butter's going to melt, 
sugar's going to melt and it's going to start boiling. And then uh, we're going to stir it a little bit and then we're going to put a lid on it and I'll tell you why. All right, we've been stirring as the butter melts and the sugar melts. And I think we're about there. Turn the heat down to medium. So now this implement here is going to disappear. It's going to go in the dishwasher and not come back into this pot. And we're going to put the lid on while this is simmering. And that's going to cause condensation in the pot. And the condensation is going to run down the sides of the pot. And that'll keep this mix from crystallizing. It'll grab any stray sugar crystals that are on the outside and take them down into the mix. And the reason why we're not bringing that same spoon back for the spatula because if it has a stray, a stray sugar crystal on it, it'll also cause this mix to crystallize. Now, if your mix crystallizes, it's not uh, the end of the world. You just stir some water back in it, melt everything back down again, and we'll bring it back up to temperature. So we're going to take this to about 290 degrees. We're going to boil it for about five minutes or so with the lid on. And if you don't have a candy thermometer, buy one of these. This is a uh, thermometer spatula got the thermometer right in the spatula you can even pull that out of the handle and use it for a probe super cool so you can stir and see your temperature at the same time it's awesome if you don't have one of these uh, just go to Amazon and look up thermometer spatula you'll find one they're pretty neat so before it comes up to temp when we reach about 250 or so 260 280 whatever We'll throw our mixture of coarse and fine almonds in there and continue to stir. So we don't need to stir this a lot because as it boils, it's going to stir itself. So not till later on in the, in the process do we even need to stir it. Okay, we've actually gone down to like medium low because these giant burners over here, they cook things pretty quickly. You can see everything's boiling nicely in the pot. So we'll give it a couple more minutes more and we'll pull the lid off. Okay, our lid is off. We're still boiling pretty vigorously, so I'm going to go down even a little bit more. So let's get our spatula in here. Make sure we get any stuff off the bottom that was getting a little too cooked. And then you can see we're at 170, 180. going to keep climbing fairly quickly 205 so what we're doing is we're cooking the moisture out of this mix because uh, water boils at 212 degrees not till some of that water leaves this mix will it get hotter so the more water leaves the hotter it will get like I said, we want to go to 290 degrees is what we're shooting for. Now the temperature you cook your sugar mixture to determines how hard it is once it cools off. So taffy and softer stuff is cooked to a lower temperature. And you have what's called the, the ball stage, the soft ball stage, the firm ball stage, the hard ball stage, the soft crack stage the hard crack stage, all of those you'll see on a candy thermometer. So we're going to like between the soft crack and the hard crack stage is what we're looking for. Your hard, hard candy will go to about 300 or so. But we want it to crack a little easier. We don't want to break our teeth on this stuff. Now if you don't have a candy thermometer, doesn't mean you can't do this. You just get you a nice heat proof spatula and uh, as it starts getting darker as it cooks you want it to turn into a dark colored like peanut butter is what the, the best described as a little darker than peanut butter and then it's done and as it gets closer to that stage you want to use the flat part of your spatula to scrape the bottom of the pan uh, you don't want it scorch on the bottom and then once it reaches that color you're done so we're at, uh, 
almost too sticky. I'm going to go ahead and dump the nuts in in case it wants it to try to separate a little bit. It'll have time to uh, reincorporate and kind of bubble back up. So let's dump those in. Give those a stir. Two ninety. All right, you see this kind of oily mess on the top? That's the problem that you can get with butter. Margarine won't do that because it doesn't separate out. But uh, we're going to try to tilt this pan after a little bit, try to get that to run off to one side, and we'll soak it up with a paper towel. Pretty sure we can still salvage the batch. I took a spatula and pushed the end of the toffee back. You can see... You lift it up, see all that oil on top. So I'm going to give it a place to drain to over here. Hopefully this isn't going to keep our chocolate from sticking to the top. That's my next concern. Got it on a slant. I just rolled up some paper towel to put down here on the end to soak that up. And I'll probably switch it out. All right, we've got as much of that clarified butter off of there as we can get. So while this is still warm, we need to put our chocolate chips on top so they'll melt. So one bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Try to get them in one layer so they melt. And then once they do melt, we're going to spread them around on here. Coffee looks good. Smells great once you throw the uh, almonds in the mix. It really smells good. Alright, that's all of our chocolate chips. Let's get these up on there. Anywhere where they're more than a single layer, just spread them out, get them touching that, that hot toffee. Alright, we're going to come back when all those chocolate chips turn shiny. You can see right now they're kind of dull. When they turn shiny, they'll be melted. All right, our chips are shiny. So now we can come in here. Looks like they need to melt just a little bit more. So we can get started. Still just a hair hard. But use an offset spatula. Easiest way to do it. If it's not an offset spatula, you'll have a hard time getting in inside the pan. If you're thin in one spot, you take some from where it's thick, put it in there. Next thing you're going to do before this gets hard, get some of your finely ground almonds. We're going to put those on the top. It takes about a half a cup, but I got plenty here in case I need more. I like a good covering of them. Next thing I like to do is I come back with my offset spatula again and just kind of tap the nuts down into the chocolate. It helps them hold on to them a little bit better. Now I have one more pan of that to make, so I'm going to have Kelly bring me home a pound of margarine and we'll see if there's a difference. Once everything starts cooling, we put them in uh, airtight containers, getting ready for when we uh, start packaging everything up. Uh, it keeps the moisture in the air from getting to them and changing the texture of them. Uh, we peel the parchment off the top of our Rocky Road bars. I like to use this knife here that I have to cut them. I cut them into like one inch squares. You can cut them however 
big you want, but uh, I just go down, go one way first, about one inch wide. You'll have uh, a little more rustic peaches along the edge. I go over about one inch. Now that we've gone the one way, we'll come back, go the other direction. what it looks like on the inside. Beautiful. Start putting it in the bowl. That's a yummy bowl of goodness right there. Got one more to do. Okay, we got our margarine, so we're going to try this with margarine. We'll show you the difference. I think it's, uh, look at the so much more even color that is. Because it's not separating. It's already looking better. Okay, we've added our nuts. It was about 280 degrees. Just got to bring it back up. We got back down to 270. So we'll get her up to 290 and we'll dump it in the pan. Now I think we can all agree that that is not an oily mess. It come out perfect, didn't separate at all, it was very easy to cook. Hands down a lot better experience than butter. And I can already tell you it tastes good because I've been eating it all my life. Okay, it's time to break up our toffee, it has cooled. This is the first one we did with the butter, so we, I'm interested to see if the chocolate separates from the toffee when I break it up. So just come in here with a pointed instrument and you just break a corner off like that and then just keep chipping away at it like that. Just break it into rough pieces. So let's see. See how that chocolate comes off like that? That's what I was worried about with that oily surface. But this piece here seems to be sticking. I'll have to be a little more careful when I'm breaking it up. Pizza cutter seems to be working a little better. And you don't have to grease your, uh, your sheet pan because there's enough enough butter, oil, or whatever in the mix to where it doesn't stick to the pan. Okay, here's the margarine batch. Breaks up pretty good, but I'm not seeing any of the chocolate separating. Looks like the chocolate has stuck really well. Cut it all broken up and put into our containers. This is the butter stuff. This is the margarine stuff. Let's do a quick taste test. All right, let's first do a taste test of the one made with butter. Tastes like toffee. It, I don't really taste any difference than what I remember. So the margarine stuff. Really good. And that's the toffee I remember from my childhood. I will say the butter recipe got a little more depth of flavor in the toffee, but everything else tastes the same. So I would give the butter a one up, but for ease of uh, making this stuff, it's really not worth 
the trade-off. The taste isn't that much different. So I'm going to continue using the margarine because it's a lot easier. And the 90-year-old lady that gave me this recipe, God rest her soul, couldn't be that wrong. As promised, here's Kelly's Christmas decoration she'd been working on since we got back from Tennessee. She always does a real good job. Oh, Ruby's in trouble. She's got her winter picture up. We have four versions of that picture all four seasons. Super cool. Let's go in here. You can see her table. She's got her little lights. This looks really cool at night when she lights those up. She loves the little red trucks. And then the little red truck has got magnetic stickers that she changes for the seasons as well. Letters to Santa. My mom painted this Santa years ago. After we get everything in the tubs, I bring it all downstairs to the basement where our big communal table is down here. And we package it all up. We wrap Christmas presents down here too on this big table. So let's get going. All right, time to package up. We're not going to do all of them. I'm going to do one for video purposes because Kelly likes to do all of our packaging. So we're going to do that this evening when she gets home. But I'll show you what they look like. I take a piece of my pre-cut parchment paper, hold it up to the tin, and then cut it across like that so it fits inside of our tin like this, and we'll start loading it up. So we've got 60 of our Oreo balls, and we have 20 tins, so we're going to put two of those in there, kind of act as a separator. Next thing we're going to go in with is some of our Rocky Road candy, and we'll put that on either end because that's what we make the most of. Then we go with our toffee in the middle. It's too big. We break it up a little bit. Get it to fit in there. Just kind of arrange it nice. There we go. Then we'll throw in some of our nut clusters like that. Probably two of them on either side. And then we'll finish it off with a couple turtles like that. There you go. Probably throw another piece of toffee here on top. But that's what she looks like. Once we're all done, we fold our parchment into the middle like that. Put our lid on. And there's our package. I always keep a paper towel here to wipe my fingers on. Otherwise, you'll get greasy little fingerprints all over your tin. Well, another Christmas candy season in the bag. Got a bunch of these to deliver after we get them all packed up. So our family and friends really enjoy our candy every year. I'm glad you enjoy our candy. Your, uh, your views on the videos have really uh, shown us that you love it. So hope you enjoyed our candy making jaunt here in 2023. We hope uh, you and yours have a fantastic Christmas season. And a happy new year. So till next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us on Mark Kelly Farm.